The Fantasy Edge with Richard Seville and Dennis Sosick. Hello and welcome to The Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville of Fantasy6Pack.net and joining me shortly will be Davis Peng, also of Fantasy6Pack.net. Dennis is off this week. Uh, last week I had to go solo and I know that didn't go too good. <laughs> I'm not very good at solo. Uh, it's uh, one uh, radio broadcaster tried doing three hours on your own and uh, and they but they have phone calls in between but... Uh, I mean, even 20 minutes is pretty tough on your own. But uh, but Davis is here to uh, talk about uh, Week 7 waivers and the latest news since the Sunday games. And uh, we are uh, recording this before the Monday night game uh, between the Bills and the... Who's, uh, who are they playing? <laughs> Davis, I've forgotten. Uh, they're playing the Titans this week. That's right. They're playing the Titans. Yes, Derrick Henry. I think... Mean, I, I, isn't that funny? You know, you get these, you just get, things just block out for some reason. But anyways, Davis, nice to have you aboard, man. Um, Davis does the uh, trade targets, and that comes out on Mondays. And uh, Davis, uh, give us give us a sneak uh, pre- peek of your of your article. Like, who's a good who's a good uh, trade target this week? Oh man, you know, good trade target. That's a that's a bit of a tough one. Okay, uh, actually, <laughs> but the, so my buy low this week, and I you know talking about some of these players that are kind of going un- are forgotten at the moment. It's I actually put Terry McLaurin. He's a head liner for me this week. Terry McLaurin's kind of had two dud weeks back to back and to have one against the Chiefs I think is a sour note for a lot of people right most wide receiver ones do their best against the Chiefs because it's always a shootout it's poor defenses you know Dan- Daniel Sorensen's a meme right now throwing his hands in the air getting burnt so I think people were expecting that and I you know you're not getting them this week to do that four catches for no touchdown for mid yardage uh-huh. I think it's a good chance to buy Ooh. Take that to the bank, folks, and uh, make sure you read his article if you want more advice on the uh, on trade targets. Which uh, we were talking before the show is that uh, you know you get people who are just tradeaholics and those who just are not. Then there's people in between. Um, let's get on to some news. Uh, Michael Thomas. Uh, Ian Rappaport reports Michael Thomas is still a couple of weeks away. Um, that's um, that still was the timetable anyway, wasn't it, Dan Davis? It, it was. Uh, we we're we we're, we weren't expecting Michael uh, Thomas to come back after bye anyway. Oh man, I actually I was hoping for it. One of my trade targets was to grab mm-hmm. Michael Thomas while you could off of teams that held him as IR. I was hoping to get him, you know, one to two weeks early just in case of because right now, as you guys know that. The Saints' pass passing attack isn't consistent. You're looking at you know Marcus Callaway mm-hmm. and that's and Alvin Kamara, and that's really about it at the moment. I was hoping Michael Thomas would come back on time, well, quote unquote, on time, and perform what Michael Thomas does. You know, 80 yards or eight catches every week. Yeah, we kind of have to hope for that because uh, because like what you say, uh, Callaway is about the only. Well, I don't even know if you can trust him. They're all sleepers basically um, yeah. every week. I mean, I, I I particularly like Deontay Harris, but I think he's injured. Not sure on that, but uh, might honestly, be. I don't know who to like out there at this point. They're all what catching two hundred. I mean, the total passing yard is just two hundred yards or less per game. I mean, how, how many? How good is that really going to be? I wouldn't have ex- I wouldn't have expected it from uh, Jameis Winston, to be honest. You know, if I you know pre before the season, I wouldn't have expected it at all. Anyway, uh, moving right along, uh, Baker Mayfield. Mayfield uh, seeking a second opinion on his shoulder. He got his uh, received his MRI results and apparently didn't like what he heard. We may not see him this Thursday. It could be Case Keenum. Uh, Baker. Uh, for what he is, I mean, he's not really the greatest ownable quarterback, maybe in a two QB league, Davis. But um, would we miss him? No, I, I am on the record plenty of times, just not big, a big Baker guy. In mm. football retrospect, he's fine. He's over, you know, he's he's a franchise quarterback by that level. But for fantasy, like, what has he done? I mean, we got a lucky hail mary to Donovan Peoples Jones. Uh, Love that. Odell that was great. For, what seventy yards? I mean, like. 
he's just never been the guy. They they give him good weapons. They have everything on that team is amazing. And if you know Tom Brady ever went to the Browns, they'd probably win a Super Bowl, right? This mm-hmm. is a team that looks like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers from last season. Looks amazing on paper, but Baker Mayfield never doesn't get doesn't get it done fantasy. No, uh, but uh, I think probably I don't think Case Keenum will harm any of the value of the uh, Browns. Uh, speaking of, <laughs> there are twenty Browns listed on Monday's injury report. <laughs> 20 Browns. We're talking about, you know, we're talking about Chubb. We're talking about Hunt. We're talking about uh, OBJ. We're talking about, of course, we talked about Baker just a moment ago. Um, and of course, uh, several other names down list, down list Browns. Um, I think, you think Kareem Hunt just get placed on the IR? I'm not sure on that. Uh, I'll take your word for it if it's in the nose as well. So it wouldn't be, wouldn't surprise me. It's either that or he gets placed on like, He's been like he's gonna be out for a few weeks. They said maybe it's not exactly IR, but he's uh yeah, but he's a, he's definitely out for the next few weeks. How, how do you feel about Dernis Johnson? I think you have to pick him up. I, he, I think he's a must pick up this season. You're looking at a guy that you're looking at a team that wanted to two, do two running backs, and you're looking at one of them already injured. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, two of them that are already injured, but two. one that's yes. going to be playing injured. <laughs> yeah. So I think you have to pick up Dearness Johnson. Okay. Uh, yeah, he is the number one running back on Fantasy Pro's waiver list, which will be posted on the uh, the, the Fantasy Edge uh, um, article uh, container. You can listen to the podcast there um dan campbell coach of the lions uh campbell uh, says he's going to change some things in the coming days of the lions um and i quote i don't want to get f- too far into where that'll go as far as the roster but we're looking at that i think we're going to shake things up here a little bit a little bit he says oh i it does does that translate really into a lot of bit um he also earlier this week davis he he was critical of uh, sort of slightly on Jared Goff. Um, what can they change? You know, uh, I saw that interview where he talked about Jared Goff a little bit. I, I, don't, did I don't think he was too critical, but, you know, he's expecting more out of a guy that's franchise paid, right? Uh-huh. I think this would be a different story if Jared Goff was like a rookie or sophomore or a guy that was underpaid, but he's not, right? So I, I feel like that's where that came from. And, you know, I'm a big Dolphins fan, so I actually was a fan of Dan Campbell prior and had hoped he was going to be our head coach at one point when he was our interim coach back in, I want to say like 2017, 2018. Mm-hmm. So I, Dan Campbell is, you know, he's a guy that has that winning mindset and he's not afraid to do, to be blunt, like Dan Campbell things. You know, he's like Brian Flores, you know, Mike Tomlin, these guys that just are going to do what they're going to do. And what that means, it can mean anything at this point, right? This roster is hodgepodge anyway, so no matter what he does, it wouldn't really matter. You know, mm-hmm. they don't have their star players, the receivers are out. You know, they, they let go of players before she started. I think what they're trying to do. Well, if you want to call to... Tyrell Williams a star player. <laughs> I mean, yeah, right? Like, sure. That's, I mean, jokes aside, like, that's what it is. Like, Rashad Perriman got let go. You know, Tyrell Williams is injured. I think what they're going to try to do is hope to find some diamonds in the rough. Right? I think that's the point of what they're getting at is like, screw it. We're losing anyways. You know, what if we give this random linebacker in our practice squad or the third string or a second stringer like a chance to go out there and make plays? I mean, we laugh, but then isn't that what Seattle did? They let all these random low, you know, like Cam Chancellor, Richard Sherman, you know, mm-hmm. Earl Thomas, all these guys that weren't highly drafted go out there and do what they want to go, go out there and dominate and they end up showing it. So I think Dan Campbell knows he has a free pass to do that and he's just going to do it because what are they, are they winning? I mean, no, no they've got nothing to lose. Yeah. I got nothing yeah, to lose. Get, so uh, let's go find some diamonds in the rough. Let's go get Amon St. Brown to be the one. Just throw some, uh, who's the other guy that went off this week from their team? Uh, Khalif Raymond. Yeah. Khalif Raymond. Let's just throw these guys out there because screw it. We have nothing else, you know? Yeah. I think, I think that's fair. Uh, moving right along. Lastly, a Cam Newton is in the news. Um, Seattle head coach Pete Carroll said the team has reached out to Cam Newton. Uh, you know, I don't think, I don't think he helps. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree with you 100% on that one. I've, I've never been a Cam guy, even on his MP year. I, I just don't see him being 
better than what Geno Smith has been doing. Mm. I think I think Pete Carroll needs to look in the mirror and kind of figure out what like he's got to change it up himself. You know, his team's been predictable for the last few years, and we change in any Cam Newton doesn't change your season. If anything, it just means they spent more cap for no reason. Oh, but he pulled a Daniel Jones right at the end of the game. Ah, oh, Geno. Uh, find me a quarterback who wouldn't have done that. You know, like you know, if you could this find these sixteen quarterbacks that wouldn't have coughed the ball from a behind the hit. This wasn't like he took the hit head on and then he let it go. He took it from behind. Yeah. No one saw this coming, right? Like he didn't see it coming. You know, I I, I even guarantee that Russell Wilson would have fumbled it at that point because Russell Wilson's also been known to fumble the ball. This is true. Matt Matt Ryan would have fumbled the ball. There's plenty of guys that would have fumbled if he took a behind the hit from an all pro player. Yeah. Completely agree. Okay, that's uh that's covers the news. Let's go to moving on up because moving on up. And my moving up, guy. moving up guy this week is uh, Cortland Sutton of the of the uh, Broncos. Uh, they're playing on Thursday. Uh, it's two straight weeks now that um, I'm just going to get his uh, statistics up here. Where is he? I should have him up. Oh, here he is. <laughs> Put up big weeks, basically. Is what you're yeah, yeah, it's two straight weeks. I think I think you're starting to be able to trust him because uh, well. In weeks three and four, he finished at uh, WR59 and WR64. Last two weeks, uh, WR11 and WR8 in a losing effort against Las Vegas. So, Cleveland up, of course, this Thursday. And um, I think you can trust him. I, it, this, of course, depends on Teddy Bridgewater. I think Teddy Bridgewater is uh, questionable. Not sure. But uh, I know. Quite frank, I, I don't like Teddy Bridgewater. I, I think he's great. He's a guy that should have went to like Washington, mm. but he's not a guy that I think works for the Bronx. Although the, those teams are similar, I think having Drew Locke on that team should have been the go ahead the get go, right? I mean, instead of having Teddy Bridgewater that conceals Drew Locke, it should have been Drew Locke that conceals Teddy Bridgewater. Or, and vice versa, if he's on the Washington football team, it should have been Teddy Bridgewater that got conceals Taylor Heineke, right? Uh-huh. Um, Corlin Sun's actually on my trade article as one of the trade highs. Uh-huh. I think with Jerry Judy expected to return in a few weeks, I think that's a, a thing that we need to look at. Also, mm. the fact that he got all his points in both games in garbage time. He got them all in the fourth quarter. He didn't get them throughout the game. That's true, but uh, but also uh, his when his target count is above ten, which I guess is going to be every single week, obviously. But um, at Jacksonville, twelve targets and uh, just uh, you know eleven and fourteen targets, one hundred twenty yards and one hundred and and ninety four yards in second. So uh, a bit of moving on up for me. Um, Maybe things are uh, turning around for people who own Court and Sutton, but uh, for me, he moves up. I, I, th- I still consider him like the low end uh, WR2, but eh, moving on up for me. I think uh, that's fair, though. Like, I think wide receiver two is totally fine. You know, he's good. He's still going to get the targets. I just don't think he gets four targets again, right. that kind of situation. Right. And like I said, and getting all your points in garbage time is a little scary to me. Like, it just tells me that you're not competitive until prevent defense begins. Right. Um, who are you? Um, who, who's moving on up for you? A lot of crashing going on over there. What's going on? Are you moving oh, house? Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> wife's home for a minute. Um... Right now, a big moving on up person for me would be uh, Darnell Mooney. Okay. One second. Sorry. Um, yeah, I said Darnell Mooney is a guy that I'm really into. I liked him a lot in the preseason. I feel if he had a better quarterback, we'd be in a better situation. But as right now, he's just not there because, well, Justin Fields, that he's, he's scared to throw the ball. I mean, did you notice any different than that from what I'm guessing at? Uh, not really. I, I, I see where you're getting at is, is Justin Fields. Um, he's, he's still in that hot and cold thing. I don't know really what they need to design runs for him a little bit more. I kind of, I sort of expected they might, but I didn't see a lot of it in the Packers game. But, and Darnell Mooney, um, yeah, he's, he's moving on up all right. He, he does better with Justin Fields. There's no question about it. And they're going to stick with Justin Fields now, moving forward. And, uh, I think to, hmm? once we start seeing 20, 30 pass attempts, I think we'll start to really see Darnell Mooney move, Mooney move up. 
Mm. But you're gonna have to hold. He's the guy that's moving up, but he's the most talented on this on his well, not on his team, but on the waivers that we're currently going at. So yeah, that's he's. All I, that's uh, why I like. They got him at uh, Fantasy Pros are ranking him the top grab off of uh, off uh, off the waiver wire. I'm just gonna check uh, his. Uh, I'm just gonna check his percentage owned on, uh, on Fantasy Pros. He's 44 percent on Yahoo owned. So yeah, there's still still a lot of. Uh, for people at least on Yahoo, but Yahoo's kind of representative of most platforms. So it'll be so it'll be in the neighborhood of uh, other platforms as well for Darnell Mooney. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I own him myself, and I I, I started him, and uh, I think there's a good floor. I think it's a, I think he you know he's 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 a good floor um, receiver. If you want, if you're if you're just happy with floor. Yeah, I, I agree to that. I think that's why I like him so much is that he's a solid floor guy. He's obviously the two on this team. And to top it off, he's not just a two. He's a two that's coming onto the field more than we thought he was going to. Right. And and he has Allen Robinson to kind of just always take away the number one cornerback. And speaking of Allen Robinson, uh, we're into the... Danger! Danger! Uh, panic. <laughs> guy really needed a good, um, for where you drafted Allen Robinson, you're just not getting it. It's not happening. And Darnell Mooney is probably a big part of it because Darnell Mooney is starting to look eh, better than Allen Robinson. Um, here's, uh, here's Allen Robinson's finishes of the last, uh, well, his best finish is WR, well, it's last week actually, WR 41. <laughs> That's his best finish. Uh, I mean, he, before that, it was 66, 51, going to week four, week three, 78. You know the rest of the story. It, it just hasn't been good for Allen Robinson. And, uh, I think the, it's, it's full panic mode now. Uh, you can't drop him, but, and you can't trade him. He just has to be there. Um, I think I, he can do both. I think you can still trade him. There's somebody that's bound to be, you know, that's a Robinson fan. Everybody, somebody likes him in your league. You know, you're in a 12 plus man league. One of these 11 other managers will like him. And you technically could drop him because you can drop anybody. If, of course, if you're you not can. performing. They're not performing. I think that's fine. Don't have to say the word choices, but I'm saying like I, I would be okay if someone dropped him. I'm actually in leagues where I see Alan Robinson on the waivers. If you're in an eight man, ten man league, you sh- he should be gone. At this yeah. point, because he's performing in the bottom forties, fifties, sixties, like uh, it's tough. Yeah, yeah, uh, he's, he's, but he is, he, he's one of those guys you'd rather trade first than drop if you can. But of course, the value is, uh, the value is just not really going up. At so he's definitely uh, the full. The panic button is pressed here. Who are you, who are you panicking on this week? Oh man, you know, going back to the trade targets, I actually was recommending to trade Devonte Smith a couple weeks ago. And he's a guy that I, I don't trust right now. And it's nothing to do with Devontae Smith. Oh, well, maybe he is partially had to do with Devontae Smith, but it's more just the Eagles. Like, yeah, the Eagles are the most inconsistent offense I think I've seen all Like, I don't know how they put up. And I've been trying to like rack my head around it, but we, nobody knows, right? They rack up points like around Jalen Hurts, but that just means Jalen Hurts runs it in. Jalen Hurts throws to like Jalen Rager. Jalen Hurts throws to Zach Hurts. Jalen Hurts throws to like, Dallas Goddard. Gunnar Hurts throws a Quez Watkins, like, or, you know, but it's not Miles Sanders. No. It's not Devontae Smith. It's, it's something around Jalen Hurts. And, and I've never, I've never seen a team put up 28 points and then nobody on the team is fantasy relevant besides the quarterback. Yeah. That's, uh, that's four, four targets, of, uh, four targets, two receptions for Devontae Smith. Yeah. yeah. And this is after he put up, I think like a hundred and something yards, like a two weeks ago. That's I right. Just, you know, his week one was great. His week five was great. I, I don't know. It's just a whole lot to get into regarding him. It re- it's really reminiscent of, uh, Cam Newton's MVP year. Where you can't tell like who the lead receiver was because he was starting to like Ted Ginn and then maybe, maybe dead punches, you know, maybe Mike Tolbert got a touchdown, maybe Jonathan Stewart got a touchdown, maybe it was just Greg Olson, right? Like it's just Greg Olson and everybody else was just a, a weird question mark off of MVP season. He's not even dumping to Miles Sanders or, or, or Kenneth Gainwell. Yeah, I don't know. Kenny Gale, I think, had like 0.6 of a point. Yeah. And then Miles Sanders had nine rushings and like two receptions. It, it was just all over the place. Nobody knows how who the, who's fantasy relevant on that team outside of the quarterback. All right. So we're going to take a look at the Fantasy Pros rankings that are first uh, first come out. And you can go to uh, Fantasy Pros and check out these rankings. But I also post these, like I say, on the 
uh, fantasy six pack, uh, site where, um, the, the podcast is housed fantasy edge here. So I'll, I'll put that list up. Um, and, uh, I'm selecting somebody from that list and I'm going with the running back, uh, Kenyon Drake. Now, Kenyon Drake had one great week, and I think uh, he was on... I don't know who does the drop list at F6P, but he was there, and I totally agreed with it. But I cannot see for the life of me that one game by Kenyon Drake means that you gotta... He's he's RB2 on the Fantasy Pros rankings. Davis, I just don't see... I don't... I, I, I'm not I'm not picking him up. I wouldn't pick him. I wouldn't make him a priority. I would only touch this guy in the deepest of leagues, or or you you just have to, to have a Ross bottle. I'm not putting much fab on him. I will grab him possibly. And the only one only reason I would do this is hoping he becomes a scat back that he's supposed to be coming into the season. Yeah. But he's not he's not a must add. And I think what it is at this point is, is there's just so much garbage on the waiver wire. And that's just why he's there. He's like the best of the garbage. <laughs> you know, like he's that's, that's probably like, right. Uh, I mean, that's another thing too. I mean, we have lost a lot of big running backs right now. I say Quan's gone, well Chubb, of course we talked about Man Hunt. Uh, CMC we, is out for another three weeks here. We haven't talked about that. I think uh, if we have to reference him to like let's say last week where you had Alex Collins on the waivers, um Lamike, you know, um yeah, Chris Harbor. Darrell Williams. Yeah. Kenya Drake would be way behind these guys. All three of those guys would have been must adds. Kenya Drake would be four, five, six, seven on that list, right? Yeah. So don't let fantasy pros they're not <laughs> trying to fool you. They're just saying he's the best piece of trash on the way for wire right now. <laughs> it just happens to be a bad week. Yeah, it's just, it is. It is a very bad week. I mean, I mean, when I'm looking down the list here, it's, it's, it doesn't even get, doesn't get much better. You know, there's just nothing left out there because of all the injuries so far. I mean, I know we got Mark, what Mark Ingram, Devontae Freeman. Like, it's not, nothing about this is like nice. I think Mark Ingram is the only one I would consider because he at least gets like 15 touches a week. This is really the year of the handcuff. This is yeah. if you, if you uh, if people, if people uh, kept their handcuff, if people handcuffed their RBs, it would have been all right. But a lot of people aren't doing that this early in the season. Uh, <clears throat> I did. I, uh, I picked up handcuffs. I mean, well, Madison's a good player and I know he's, so I, so I thought, ah, I'll pick up Madison if anything happens. Uh, I've got a good plug player and he went and, and he's basically a carbon copy of Dalvin Cook, really. Um, I mean, you put in you put in Alexander Madison, but that's not the same for every RB, of course. No, you're 100 percent right on that one. I wish it was, but uh, um, but I don't know. Madison Madison's kind of a big upsep- exception. I mean, you can we we can talk about Daryl Williams and Khalil Herbert. I mean, Khalil Herbert is kind of a carbon copy of of David Montgomery because David Montgomery is basically his upside trait is volume and basically that's what transferred to Khalil Herbert and why he did so well you know I know Funny that you say that is um on, on another show I was speaking for last week, we were talking about, they were asking us to rank basically those three guys, Alex Collins, Khalil Herbert, Devontae Booker, and Darrell Williams. And I was, and I told him, I was like, I really like Khalil Herbert just because the Bears right now are, are doing the one thing that we just complained about a few minutes ago, which is there's no pass attempts on this, or at least meaningful ones. So even when they're losing, you know, by 15, 20 points, it doesn't matter because Khalil Herbert will get 15 to 20 touches. Like whoever that running back is, is going to get touches because they don't want Justin Fields to Throwing. They didn't want Andy Dalton. They just like you know we're losing. Dave Montgomery run the ball twenty two. Yep. Like I, and that's the only team that does it. It's the Bears and the Bears backup running back whoever is their scout whatever always seems to find these random guys that do it right. Jeremy Langford was a guy that was a backup that randomly. Oh, I remember it. him. Forte was yeah. exactly. Jordan Howard was another guy that randomly yep. did it with some, when Jeremy Langford got hurt. Like these guys that are in their backups always are like really strong rentals and Killer Herbert just fits that profile and it cracked me up. I was like, I'm putting it up there just because all these guys that have been the backups end up having 20 touches and being fantasy relevant for like as long as their rental span was. Yeah, I would say that uh, in in the current climate, it might be a good idea to pick up Tarek Cohn if he's a, if because he'll be coming back soon. Yeah. Um, who have you got for an RB? Uh, my if I had to pick a running back off this wave wire pull, I mean outside of Darius Johnson, right? Mark Ingram. I mean, really? he's the only guy that's still getting a lot of touches, and they're gross. But it's better than a goose egg. Houston, you know, though. <laughs> yeah. I know, and I, and I feel absolutely dumb because I'm a big Lindsay guy coming from Houston. But right. Mark Ingram, at the end of the day, his stats speak for itself. It's gross, but they're points. And if you're that desperate where you're looking at waiver wires, like you could do worse than the guy that's, and I'm looking at it right now, 
that got 16 touches two weeks ago and 18 touches last week, and he got two catches. So you know, 70, you know, 81 yards on 20 touches is on, in a in a 30 to 31 game to top it off is not the worst thing in the world. And if you're looking before that, he got 41 yards. Points are points, and if you're in the waiver wires, you don't have a choice. Get the guy that at least gets touches at the yeah. least. That's fair. Um, it's not just uh, him. It's uh, uh, you know, Johnson, David Johnson. Still, is he hurt or something? Or is he all right? I, David Johnson is used for the passing downs, and even then, they're not even really yeah. like you know you expect. If your team is losing, you get like seven passes to seven targets to like David Johnson. David Johnson got two targets. He had six to one prior to that. So like, you know, and four prior to that. But he got two. You know, his tar- his touch total is basically nothing. So I, I just don't see it. You know, if he got consistently six to eight targets a game every single week, I'd be fine with that. But he got six targets one time, and every other time before that's four or two. So that's why I hmm. won't recommend him because it's you know four targets is not as strong as six rushing attempts, even if they are on a bad team. Yeah, and then it's uh, Lindsay that's not nothing. Let's move on to uh, wide receivers now. I see you have um, I see you have somebody very interesting for your uh, wide receiver, and he's actually W. You are two on the fantasy pros rankings. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I selected Rashad Bateman. Um, you know, he was a guy that I was telling people just, you know, keep on your IR. He is a first round pick. Lamar Jackson wants to prove he's a passer. And I think Bateman helps him do that. And yeah, his point total this week was not great. But the one thing that, that you should be excited about is that Rashad Bateman still got, I want to say four catches mm-hmm. and he still had the same amount of targets, if not more. Than Mark Andrews or Marquise Brown. Right. They all got six targets or less. And Rashad Bateman was one of the guys who got six targets. And his first game, first game returning. I, that should tell you a lot. That tells you he wants to get this guy involved. Right. I can't, you know, and, and if Lamar Jackson is going to go for MVP again, he's going to do it. He's going to have to do it off of someone like Rashad Bateman. Kind of helps with Watkins on IR too. Yeah, especially Watkins on IR. So, uh, yeah, so that's a, a reasonably sound pickup. I, um, I like Donovan Peoples Jones and you know, I kind of liked him at the season and I had him on my team. Now I think he's going to be a hard pickup. I know he's W1 and 9 here, but that doesn't make sense to me because I really think he's I, I know he caught that spectacular, but he's been doing, besides that spectacular uh, Hail Mary, he's been doing a lot of other stuff that have re- has really impressed me. Even even last season, I was kind of, ex- I was kind of thinking, there's something, th- I, this guy's a good player, and uh, I think uh, he's getting missed, and, and. He really, he kind of reminds me of um, Gary Barnridge, right? A guy that was like buried on a depth chart that is just biding his time for years, and when he got his chance, he like blew up. Mm. I think this is kind of of like the wide receiver version of that like i think we all love dpj right he's the coolest name in the league it I is dra- i actually drafted him a lot in best ball just because i thought it'd be funny too mm-hmm. and i actually started him in um if anybody knows james co's youtube this week i actually started him i was i, I was desperate i needed a guy and i, I started on people's jones so i benefited from his 24 points because uh, we know he's good he's just buried behind big names and, yeah obj and, 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 and really obj i <laughs> OBJ is a he's a hopeless diva and I, and and that's kind of like Antonio Brown had to get over the diva thing and look at him now he's over the diva yeah. thing and now now that because it's one of the reasons I didn't draft Antonio Brown because I thought oh he's this diva that's good you know he's just full of but no he's he's Tom Brady has smoothed out uh, Antonio Brown's diva ness. If I, if I mean, it's a public it portion of it, but yes, I agree. And that's a whiff on a lot of a lot of people. We know we didn't want to believe that you know a thirty-something-year-old Antonio Brown would outdo a Mike Evans uh, and a, and a Chris Godwin of all things, right? Mm. So it is something that we have to you know we have to understand that sometimes the divaness once that goes away, you could be good again. Yeah, exactly. And uh, like some play- players, some veterans don't get it. Like Julio Jones, he doesn't have that divaness. You know, he seems to come to work, and so so not not all players get that. But uh, OBJ is one of them, pretty sure. Uh, but Donovan Peoples right. Jones, uh, third wide receiver finish uh, this week, thirty um, fifth last week, but he still got seventy yards, uh, scoreless yards. I mean, the two touchdowns plus, plus the, of course, that spectacular highlight, uh, which was really, really great. I, I, I just, I, I watched that. Uh, I, I watched that replay of that uh, big play, Baker. Bigger to Peoples Jones was great, just solid. And you know, and no, it's amazing. And Peoples Jones should be super proud of himself. I, I think everyone's dream is to catch a dead hill Mary, and I got to do it. That's just the most impressive thing ever. It's a highlight for your lifetime. So yeah. props to him on that. 
And I just hope he gets to finally break out at some point in time, whether it's today or it's next year. I just hope he gets there because it'd be it'd be nice to have names based off the team names based off of Donovan Peoples Jones. <laughs> um, moving on to uh, the tight ends now. OJ Howard is uh, tight end four on the on the list, and really, I don't think it's it's Cameron Brait to me. If while Gronk is out. Uh, I I don't I don't see why OJ Howard is on this list of the fantasy pros rankings. I mean I don't like I could do I could join in on these waiver rankings, but I I don't I prefer to sit back and criti- critique them of which are good and which are not. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I respect that. And so uh, so I. T- I, I critique this, uh, this him being TE4. I would put Dan Arnold ahead of him. Dan, Dan Arnold's at uh, TE5 of the, of the Fantasy Pros rankings. I, uh, waiver rankings. I, and even, I would even Pat, Pat Fryermuth, who's a TE6. I'd put him ahead. Uh, Ross Dwelly. It's just, so in my opinion, it's just lazy work, what they did. We know what it is. He got a touchdown and had a lot of points mm-hmm. this one week, so he's a must-add, right? But, I mean, if you look at the numbers, you're talking about, like, se- six receptions, so, like, less than 50 yards is realistically not good. Uh, it's not terrible, but it's, like, this isn't a must-add. Mm-hmm. I think being tight end four is probably fine, but... You know, the comparison is, who is he facing offense? I think you're right. When you say Dan Arnold, Pat Frymuff should have been higher. And I think you can argue that Evan Ingram shouldn't even be on this list. You know, Tyler Clonkin, possibly. But I don't know. There's too many mouths to feed in Tampa. Like, the last thing I want to do is at the tight end. That isn't Yeah, good. exactly. Because Tom Brady is biased. We know he's biased to his friends. And it's Gronk and Antonio Brown are, are very showing of that right now. Yeah. And Seals Jones is absolutely fine when Logan Thomas is out. Yeah. <laughs> they just killed it week to week to week. I mean, they can't yeah. even argue against this at that point. And people yeah. seem to lose him for some reason. I don't, he's a big man. I have no idea how he, he gets so lost in the back. Speaking of Pat Freermouth. Uh, okay. uh, That's <laughs> my guy for this pick. Yeah. I, I love him. You know, um, I do a show with uh, every now and then with another person who's a big Steelers fan. And every week he's getting more and more time on the field. Eric Ebron's a thing of the past. Eric Ebron is now Vance McDonald. You know, I got a big name guy that's now just no longer really on the field mm. or less on targets. Pat Frymouth had seven targets. And I know I just gave crap to OJ Howard for that. But the difference is, is that Eric Ebron or something can't come back and take it away from him. And there's a lot less mouths to feed now that these receivers are getting hurt left and right. Or they're just inconsistent. Like talk. Big Ben went seven targets for two receptions with Clay Chase Claypool because there's no zip in his ball. Chase Claypool gets offensive penalties. Like I, I'm not a big Chase Claypool guy, and watching him get an obvious offensive penalty kind of proves it to me. He, I think he's done it almost every week. I don't know like what really... I don't know what's gone wrong with Chase Claypool. He was he he was kind of he had I don't know where the upside's gone for him. He's he's okay, but the upside the upside's is still there. It's gone because of Ben. And mm. I think it's gone because the development went south. I think when you're not winning, you're not making big plays all the time, you have to compensate. But Chase is a guy that was so raw that he doesn't know how to compensate, right? Really good stud players, like uh, watch Kenyon Drake's uh, pass, catch, touchdown from, I mean, the Raiders, right? He compensates a bad throw by kind of like zipping out to the left and catching it. Mm. Or with Terry McClure in week one, where he kind of slides to catch the ball. Like these guys kind of do that. But like if you watch Chase Claypool, He's a physical guy, so all he knows is how to do physicalness to compensate. So he he gets offensive penalties. He he falls on cornerbacks, things like that. Like, cause he's not polished, mm-hmm. and I think it hurts him a lot. Like when you're just a raw skill set guy, like you don't know how to finesse your way into the game, it mm-hmm. shows. And you'll see it whenever you watch Shea Claypool try to take a big deep pass, and he's punching the other play like, cornerback, and then he gets an offensive penalty flag, or he can't catch the ball because he just doesn't know how to. And yeah, I think that's be, that's a that's, that's a, a big of, difference between him and Deontay. Uh... Isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Like Deontay Johnson knows how to play football and Chase Claypool knows how to be physical. And it's two different things. And you clearly see it when the deep shots come. Mm-hmm. And it sucks that you can't mix them together because if you could mix them together, they'd be the perfect receiver. And I guess yeah, that's I why it was basically on Sunday night. It was the uh, Deontay Johnson, Najee Harris show. I mean, realistically, it was a Chase Claypool show too. He had seven targets. A little bit. He yeah. yeah. He, he had plenty of opportunity. And, you know, every week you're just playing toss up. 
Mm. And I think a pro- farm up is going to be that ha- like that safety net outside of um, Nachi Harris. Yeah. Well, every week, no, but some weeks, that's fine. Yeah, good, definitely a good streamer pick, uh, Pat Fairmouth. Uh, completely agree. Um, time for spec guys. These are guys on the outside of the, the list, and uh, these are kind of the, to me, I think it might be a good idea to pick up Justin Jackson of the Chargers just in case, considering the, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about the, why the, there seems to be a universal loss of, of RBs, but I think guys to, I think it might be a good idea to stash a, uh, a decent R because Justin Jackson's a decent RB to stash yeah. in case of of injuries. I mean, we've seen so many. I mean, I mean, we even we the, the list that we gave earlier was just a short list. I mean, there's there's yeah. lots of uh, big names uh, that are out. Like, you no, know, we didn't even mention Ceh and uh, a couple of others. So, I mean, this is. Uh, I think it might be. I think it might be seriously a good idea to to maybe stash a couple of these good, good Arby's. Not necessarily ones, because otherwise it'll be a waiver rush. Um, you won't be able to afford the fab because you've used up all your fab already on, on other stuff because of, you know. So I, I'm going to I'm gonna pick Justin Jackson. Uh, he's got no no real stats to to, to, uh, to shout about at the moment because, you know, obviously Austin Eckler. By the way, speaking of, Austin Eckler had a terrible game. Of course, Justin Herbert had a terrible game. The, the, I, I kind of expected it sort of uh, that one of the two teams playing in that game Game was going to have a down game because it was they're coming off big huge victories both of them so it just happened to be the chargers visiting baltimore but uh, uh they'll be back they'll be back uh, they're on they're on a bye week now so, but uh and uh, and i know that uh but justin jackson is a, a sneaky pickup because the chargers are on a bye in week seven so you can pick him up and stash him if you have the room Oh, we didn't even no, talk no. about we haven't talked about drops, huh? Yeah. But uh, oh, yeah. Well, we we'll, 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 we'll do the drops that. after the spec ads. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you're 100 percent right with this. I I think Justin Jackson is a fine ad. I wouldn't. I know I had a one of these guys I helped with this league add him recently, and I kind of made fun of him for it because, but he he did it out of a fear of injury. But the problem I made fun of him for was there was better options that guys who were actually starting yeah. on the waivers. But right now, that at the list, they're they're falling apart. And I don't, I don't blame anyone for taking handcuffs at this point. Like, if someone said, "Hey, man, you know, let me go grab Samaje P. Ryan after the COVID nineteen," I'd be like, "Yeah, that makes sense." Joe Mixon already suffered an ankle injury. The last thing you want to do is leave, you know, not pick up the guy that we know is going to take the job when if he gets injured. Mm-hmm. So, like, he's not on my list, but Samaje P. Ryan would be the example what you're giving of Justin Jackson. Yeah. But if I had a spec ad, and I, I I love this guy from day one, and I'm going to continue to pitch him. But give me Nico Collins. I, I, I this is a lot a lot of Texans. I think this is going to be the most Texan. Oh talk man, I got to look this up because I don't even know who the guy is. I like that though. <laughs> yeah, he's a wide receiver too on the team of the, the the Texans. He was drafted in the third round. I talk about it a lot. If Tyrod Taylor would have stayed healthy, I think Nico Collins would have been great. Uh, both of them got injured, so this is kind of why he sees us down. But upon his return, after missing three games, Nico Collins puts up, you know, gets six targets for four, you know, four receptions at 44 yards. Like I said about Rashad Bateman, like that's what you want to see when a guy returns from an injury and is a rookie, that he's getting targeted. Davis Mills' first, you know, touchdown, I want to say, was it the first touchdown preseason? Went to Nico Collins. They have a chemistry. They're practicing together. So the fact that this guy comes in, you know, out does his projection of, you know, four points by getting you six and a half. That's a kind of a good thing. You, you know, we already know the Texans are going to play from behind. So, like, give me the guy that Davis Mills likes beyond Brandon Cooks because you'll be surprised. Like, there's got, the wide receiver things are driving up, like, are going to dry up eventually too. You know, we're talking about Donovan Peoples-Jones and Jameson Crowder and things like that. Mm-hmm. So give me Nico Collins. And he's way off the board. I don't think anyone's thinking about him. He's 1% rostered. Yeah. Be funny. Grab a guy that no one's looking at and then start him and see what your opponent says. <laughs> like, like, what? <laughs> Finished uh, so. WR49 against the Colts. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a bad set of games, but this is a guy that came back and he put up, he had six targets. You know, how many wide receivers, you know, 120s are getting six targets? Mm. I don't know many. Up so. up, up against a couple of tough defenses coming up, Arizona, at Arizona, and then the Rams, and then uh, things lighten up a bit with Miami and then the bye for the Tech. So, no, um, no, I don't diss it because uh, when it comes to spec ads, spec ads can happen. They can go off. And uh, I like it. I like it. I like it mainly because 
I didn't know the name. In fact, I didn't even have him on my rest of season rankings, and I'm going to put him on there because of your recommendation. He's going to go on the he's going to go on the rest of season list. So I'll put him oh, on. Oh man, there. I'm 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 honored. Like I said, I love this guy. He's one of my most <laughs> like rostered people in really deep leagues. He's just interesting, you know. A team that was it was just a little bit of history on Nico Collins. He went to I think he went to Michigan. Mm-hmm. He's one one of the reasons that people joke about the hard balls is that Nico Collins never took off over there. Right. But he missed a year for COVID. And then the Texans still traded up to get him. Mind you, this is a team that's already looking to dumpster, like just dumpster their entire roster and get more picks. They literally traded up to grab this guy. That, that tells you something, right? Like, I've never seen a that, rebuild that, team. That's interesting. That's very yeah, interesting. Was, that's very interesting. So they traded up to grab this guy, and it was in the third round, which is not the most amazing thing, but it's he was still a guy that they traded up to grab, which is just funny. And then they cut a bunch of players to grab him. So they cut Randall Cobb to trade away. They also cut another guy, um, Kiki QT, to, right. to keep Nico Collins. Just like these random right. things that you wouldn't do. What school again did you say? Pick. What school again? Michigan. Michigan, that's right. So just an interesting ad. You know, definitely a dynasty ad of anything, but something to think about, right? He's like 6'4 to top it off. It's like he's a 6'4 guy that, uh, you know, a team on rebuild picked up. That's just the weirdest thing. And they got rid of like staples. And then they got rid of Anthony Miller after, again after they obtained him. Right. And they keep and they kept this kid. I don't know why they did, but they did. And I think that's funny. So he's obviously the wide receiver too on this really bad team. You know, six targets, four catches, 44 yards, nothing to write home about. But if you're in a deep league, or if you just want to grab somebody to, to see what people say, like, I think this is a guy you can do. And he's straight out there, right? He's not in my top 15 or 10 guys about the waiver, but oh, no, I like is... him. But we're looking at someone that no one's looking. At. That's that's what uh, that's what this uh, that's what this portion is for. Um, time to well, if we're going to pick up people this week, we have to draw up. We got to make room. So uh, I'm gonna say, uh, like, look, people, um, drop Randall Cobb. You don't need yeah. Randall Cobb. He had only one big week, and I really don't think outside of you know, I, I don't like any receivers on the on the Packers besides Devonte Adams. Uh, I mean, they're all just boom busts, um, and and that includes Cobb. But uh, I know Cobb had that huge week, and people raced out to get him. I don't know why you can drop him like a stone. You don't need him. Don't trust him. No, I, I agree. I agree with you one hundred percent on that one. I I just don't see it. I got sucked into the Robert Tunyon portion um, towards the end of the, be- the preseason just because they paid him, mm-hmm. and you know they obviously follow the money, and I did, and now I am sad. But I followed the money. <laughs> no, I you am know? sad. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm sad. Like him and Logan Thomas, you know, I followed the money. And yeah. now I'm eating it. I'm eating a lot of crow for that. So, I mean, to be fair, I only dropped Robert Tugget in like a couple leagues, not a ton. But yeah, I, I don't agree. I, I don't disagree. There's no reason to roster anybody on the team that isn't Aaron Jones or Devontae. Because they are the no. one-two punch in this team. Nobody else. Exactly. Uh you're making room on your roster. Who are you dropping? Oof. I, I'm a Dolphins fan, all right? So this is going to sting myself. But Miles Gaskin, I think you drop any running back. that If you rostered any of the Dolphins running backs, you have to drop them. The Dolphins have not had a, a serious run game in, in my opinion, a decade. Some people will argue that. Uh, or close to a decade. I would say Lamar Miller was our last good running back. No Sean Marino. Um, I liked him. I loved him, but he only played two or three games with us. He, funny if you said that. He was the, he's the only he was on the He was on the Broncos game. before that, but I, I liked him. But he I, got injured on, on, the, on the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. And he was the only running back we ever added off off of like free agency that I thought was good, right? We tried Jay Ajayi, we, we drafted, and he had that one good season, but he only only had three good games. He had, he had like thirteen dud games. It was really bad. Um, then we tried the Frank Gore experiment with Arian Foster experiment. The list can go on and on, right? We tried Jordan Howard, we tried Malcolm Brown, all these guys. The Dolphins do not have a run game. The run game died with Ricky Williams and maybe Miles Gap and, and maybe Lamar Miller. I think I think you're gonna hurt yourself by rostering them. Let them go to the let them just go to the waiver and let some other guy pick him up and suffer from starting them every week. Yeah. The Dolphins still not to do it. I think I said on a on a pro on another podcast with Dennis, I said to him on, a, on maybe it was on a podcast, I can't remember, maybe it was something I wrote. But I, it seemed to me I felt like if the Dolphins were pursuing Le'Veon Bell, I'd be more excited about that than the than the Ravens uh, pursuing Le'Veon Bell. I would yeah. rather I would rather see. I think Le'Veon Bell fits on the Dolphins. I think he would be a good fit there, better than the Ravens. Yeah, I think if you're comparing those two teams, yes. But I think Le'Veon Bell himself is just done. I don't think he's never. I don't think, in my opinion, he's ever been that good. I think he was a beneficiary from being on by far one of the best teams in the NFL, which was Steelers, basically all of the 2000s. Yeah. Um, I think he was just a beneficiary of that, and it kind of shows when you can see that 
they can literally put almost a running back in and they succeed, right? James Conner succeeded. DeAndre Williams succeeded. Um, freaking Najee Harris right now is succeeding. Um, hell, even Benny Snell had a few good games, right? Mm. I, I think Le'Veon Bell was just a product of being a good team. And we've seen him on other teams, the Jets, the Ravens, the Chiefs. It's just never going to get there. Yeah. So I don't know if that's, I mean, it's, it is a better move than him being on the Ravens. I, what the Dolphins need to do is they need to stop being cheap with the running backs. They need to stop not drafting first rounds or rounders. I know people give crap to running backs in the first round, but what did the 30th pick do for us when we took Noah Igabogany, right? Like, right. What has Jalen Phillips done for us? I think fair. I think Jalen Phillips would be good, but like, would he have been better than like Najee Harris? Would Najee Harris not impact our team over Jalen Phillips right now? Oh, that'd be awesome. So, right. yeah, there's, so I don't know. I think that's what it is, but Miles Gaskin, just let him go. He, unless he's being treated like an actual receiving back, which is what he is, you're never going to get value. You're never going to be able to start him confidently and you're going to keep this guy on your roster. And he's going to have a Tampa Bay game once every six games. And then you're going to come and go, I'm going to start him. And then you get burned again. <laughs> you know what, Davis, uh, we were, Dennis and I, I mean, I, I talked down like before his blow up game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, we're already talking about him dropping because, I mean, he, against the Colts, he had two carries, you know, for three yards. I was at that man. game, by the way. It was were really you? Bad. Right. I was, uh, uh, Front side lines right next to the Colts team. Uh, all the Dolphins fans, but they're the only sidelines in Hard Rock Stadium are on the Colts on, on the away team side. Mm. So I was on the sidelines um, and got to watch it unfold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Two carries, three rush yards. Uh, it's so the, the Dolphins haven't had a run game in over a decade. At least not least at least since some Lamar Miller, and even then they underutilized that man. So yeah. I would never do it. Don't fall for the trap. Don't try it every year until the Dolphins either pick up an amazing free agent, like let's say what should have been Melvin Gordon two years ago, but let's say it's Ezekiel Elliott somehow ends up on, you know, there. Then yes, then then that's fine. But if they're picking up these random guys, like they try to get CJ Anderson a few years ago, you know, they try to get, you know, Aaron Jones would have been a great person for us to take off of that. Yeah, just don't trust the run game for the Dolphins until it happens, until old linemen come in, until a, new, a, a young running back comes in. Why is it hard when you're at a game to keep your fantasy hat on? Why is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, why? why you know, I think everybody roots for their team first before they care about their fantasy, right? I mean, everybody does, right? Like, I don't care if my team slaughters. Like, if I'm facing, I actually, a few years ago, I was facing, um, when I was at the Rams, the Rams Dolphins game, my, my, my buddy I took to me to the game had Jarvis Landry. Mm -hmm. And Jarvis Landry crushed me. And I was so happy. I was like, yeah, he's killing me right now. They're winning. And I think <laughs> that's fine. I think it's, it's everyone takes their fantasy hat off when you're at the game. Yeah. Unless you're not, unless you're like a, because everyone deep down is an NFL purist, whether they believe it or not. That's right. I mean, nobody's, nobody's looking at their phones at the, at the game. <laughs> you just yeah, don't. There's no way. You can't. There's no way in heck. I, I will gladly take an abuse from Jarvis Landry putting up those points again, just so my team could win. If Miles Gaskin put up those 30 points against me and he won me the game, I wouldn't care. We did not care less. I would be like, great. I got to, what well, first, I got to watch a great game, obviously. If someone puts up 30 points, you probably watch an amazing game. And then secondly, like, it's your home team. It's your team. Yeah. That's the end of the show. Uh, Davis Pang, great to have you as a, as a guest co-host. Uh, um, I'm sure it'll happen again because uh, Dennis is quite busy these days, and uh, I'm just so glad you could fill in for us. It was been, it's been a real pleasure. Oh, man, it's been fun. I, you know, I love doing these kind of shows. Or it's nice to talk about different topics. It's nice to see what you know, everyone's mindset on because that's one thing I'll tell anybody, and I tell myself all the time, the reason I joined the fantasy community is because I didn't have all the answers. Mm. I don't have all the answers. I've never finished 16 and 0. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> like, like, someone teach me, someone show me, tell me about guys I don't know about. Tell me about schemes I don't know about. Mm. That's how you get better at this. This, this is, is why true. these, this is what makes these so great. So I always attend a show because I want to know what you saw that I didn't see and or vice versa. You can see what I, you know, tell you what I saw, what you might not see. That's cool. Yeah. Um, be sure to check his uh, trade targets. That's out already. That comes out on Mondays. And be sure to check my blurb view. And the rest of the season comes out on Thursday. Uh, Friday, of course, is the blurb view. And uh, that covers every single game. And uh, you'll be able to see all, all, all our stuff at fantasy6pack.net. Until next week, everybody. Thank you for joining us on the Fantasy Edge. We'll see you next week. Take care, everybody.